Here we go into my oldest son's room. As you can tell, he kind of got tired of using the sheets. That's okay because I I don't really enforce them to have to put their sheets on every time they get up. I don't enforce them to have to make their bed every morning. I used to have them make my bed, but that didn't do any good. This is the other son's bed. I don't think he ever put sheets on his bed. And both of them have, like the oldest son has a dog. The youngest one has a cat. And the youngest one's cat is really nasty. So I decided to go ahead and make these uh, beds. Is I guess they call them floating platform beds. They uh, look like the bed is floating in the air. And it... It really didn't take a whole lot of lumber because I had most of it. I used a bunch of plywood that I actually had uh, left over from tearing out the cabinets that were here. And all I had to do is buy a bunch of two by sixes. And as you see here, I'm cutting them down to make them to where the mattresses will fit on them. And you have to make them really sturdy. So on the top platform, you want a board every 12 inches or so on the bottom platform you're just holding the top platform so you really only need the long ways boards to hold that so you don't really need a whole lot for that you just need three going across on the bottom part of the bed and uh, i think i did six or seven going across the top uh really it depends on what size bed you're making. Like these are going to be full size beds. Uh, we're graduating them up from the 10 twin mattresses. The oldest one already had a full size bed, but the middle one, he didn't have anything but a twin size hospital bed in his room. And you know, they were always complaining about their mattresses not being very soft and of course they were older mattresses i mean we've had them for at least seven to eight years and they came with the used beds whenever you get this lumber from the lumber yard you always want to make sure you take it all the nails and staples so you don't tear them all up tear your blades up and ruin everything as you see there there's all the lumber cut down to size now I'm taking it outside because the next part I have to cut some of the two by sixes a little bit thinner because I'm going to have a three quarter inch uh, piece of plywood that goes on top of this thing to make it really sturdy on top of the two by sixes. So I got my little wagon and I get them all loaded up and here we go. Let's go out there. Now as I was saying before I have to cut off part of the two by six so that the three quarter inch uh, plywood will fit on the top. Now this first board, what I do, oh, this is where I'm cutting off the three quarters of an inch off of each one of the top boards. Now, remember there are two uh, beds being made here. So I have twice the amount of lumber So I just run them through there. It's nice to have all the boards ready to go whenever you go to make a cut. Uh, see, I made the blueprint on SketchUp, which is a CAD software for the computer that you can design about anything. And when you're able to design stuff, it makes it really nice because uh, you can see it before you build it. And that's always been my problem is I'll get in the middle of the building. Well, I didn't figure one of the things you see there I was pointing out that I pre drill the holes with a countersink bit so that I can sink the screws in now first when I was screwing and these together you see I didn't have any clamps or nothing I thought that I didn't really need them because I didn't I do have clamps but I don't have them wide enough to fit these uh, cross members and I can't really remember exactly how long these cross members are. Maybe if I get enough views on this video, I'll make another video that explains how much lumber was used, what size to cut the boards and everything. I really don't have a lot of traffic on this channel, so I'm just 
trying to do videos to put some videos on it's been a while since i've done any videos now as you see there i clamped the two sideboards together and then i just go ahead and measure down and on that's the top board part of the bed that i'm going to be using so i do it every foot and now when i measure every foot i go three quarters past and three quarters behind so that i know exactly where the board's going to go but however after i do plane them down it's kind of like they're not that size anymore anyway, so, you know, the three quarters past and three quarters behind don't exactly match up. Now you see there, I got that clamp. I went to Harbor Freight to get that. It was nice to have that clamp. That clamp right there was only like 20 bucks and it kicks butt. It's long enough. I bought two clamps. The other clamp was a heavy duty. It was like 40 bucks. And it's really nice, but when I got home, it didn't fit on the damn base. But at least I have a long clamp now. See, the only clamps I had before were pole clamps, and they didn't even grip very good because the poles were all pitted and rusted. Got them out of a storage locker in my old uh, store days, thrift store days. But, hey, they served their purpose for the longest part. Now you see here I'm making the second bed. I kind of skipped through this as fast as possible because I don't really want to spend a lot of time showing you how to make each bed individual. I'm doing two at once because I have two sons that need the beds. And after I got done with this, I've seen people selling beds a lot like this for like 500 bucks. And I mean, about 100 to 150 bucks is all you need to spend on the lumber to do these things. That's if you buy the plywood and the boards and shoot that's even with the screws now the paint i use oil-based paint on my uh furniture because the oil-based paint does seem to last longer and it is a lot easier to uh shine up because oil-based paint does have a natural shine to it now you see right now the bed's upside down now if i was smart i would have put that board right in the middle right in the middle to where i didn't have to measure both boards for that now i got both of them done i go ahead and do my weight test to see if it's going to flip up whenever you're jumping on one end because you know the kids are going to want to jump on the beds for sure and that's crazy stuff but they don't really care they'll, they'll do whatever they got to do you know to entertain themselves gotta do cartwheels and backflips and front flips and all kinds of stuff these kids are crazy now you see there, I got the boards. You want it to end in the middle of a two by four. That way your next uh, piece of plywood can be sturdy and lock into the same two by four. See, I got out my counterweight there so I could cut that thing. Now this one here, I had to rip it down to size. I cut one side and then I cut the other side because both sides were kind of rough and then i had to do my little dance i danced a jig on this did some break dancing made sure that the bed didn't break now you see it did come up on that one side a little bit but when you have a mattress on there you really it's i doubt very seriously it would come up right here i used some of that stainable wood filler this is a paint grade piece so i don't really expect to have to stain it but I just want the holes to go away, so I'll go ahead and put this paint, or this, uh, it's actually wood putty, or wood filler, and it's stainable, so. And oh my gosh, the favorite part, you put on your headphones, you jam out, and you just sand for like two hours. I started off with the 60 grit, just get all the big, heavy burrs off of it, and then I went down to the 240 to make it really smooth and pretty. That worked really good. And there I go. There's that oil-based paint. I'm doing it black because these are actually going to be lit up, I decided, through this. And whenever I switch my colors, I use these bags. Because you put your little roller in it. You notice how I had the miniature roller, the 4-inch or whatever. I put it in this bag with my paintbrush and my stir stick. And it really does help. Like when... I, I didn't use the paint for the top of these. I used uh, a polyurethane so that the mattress would not stick to the bed. 
and I didn't want to use the paint. I didn't know if they'd scratch off onto the mattress. So I used the polyurethane as kind of a coating in case the kids or some dog has to be in there. If you didn't notice right there, I put holes around the lid where the lid seals into the can. That way it pushes the paint out of the uh, crevice and it makes it to where it seals better. And of course, I, I, I always do three coats of paint on all my projects because the thicker the paint, the better, I've always found. And the first coat's kind of a light, I'm gonna get stuff, and then the second coat is filling in the gaps, and the third coat is just making sure that everything is the pretty much the same pitch, you know, making sure that you don't have light and dark spots. You see my son there. He really does get entertained when I get to working on this stuff. I love having him in the shop, but he does get in the way sometimes, bumps his head, gets into stuff. That's okay. Now, the fun part, sand some more. After I painted that, I should have really got these ready in the first place. These are old used plywood panels, so they're pretty rough. I pulled them off the old cabinets we had in the house. But these beds are platform beds, so they do have to have plywood going across. And, you know, there's three different pieces for each bed because that's how wide the cabinets were. Because these are some pretty nice oak plywood uh, pieces that were left over. And I like to reuse some of the wood that I got. Been trying to find something to do with these. I was going to make new kitchen cabinets out of that wood. But I decided that since I'm probably going to use some of this wood we got off the walls for the fr face frames of the cabinets, I was like, well, maybe I want some real fine uh, plywood, you know, more some of the more expensive stuff, you know, like $80 a sheet or so. Or I think right now it's like $60 a sheet. So... I mean, this plywood, yeah, I could make cabinets out of them since before I was actually planning on uh, painting them. But we really do love the wood grain. And I also do love uh, to, now you see me, run that on my boot. That's an easy way to clear your sandpaper is to run your sander on your shoe. That rubber gets it out. Now, after I get everything all sanded out, it just take me a little, little bit of soap water and I wipe everything down. I blew all the dust off of it the best I could. Now I just wipe it down. Make sure that it is plenty of clean to where the paint will stick to it. Now, after I get it all clean, I take the hot blow gun, or what is it, the heat gun, and I go ahead and go over it, all the wet spots on the wood because you really should let it set for like 24 hours, let it dry completely out before you put anything on top of it or paint it or anything. But you know me, I'm always in a hurry and I don't really, ain't nobody got time for that. So I pull out my uh, polyurethane there. And as you see, I just, I have a pan just for oil-based stuff and I wipe it out when I'm done. I don't use paint thinner. I don't clean my utensils. The brush and the roller get thrown away after I'm done with the project and since I put them in the Ziploc bag the gallon Ziploc bag I can actually use them for like a week I put them in every night just like that see there's a stir stick and then after I put the stir stick in I'll get the uh, roller off of it I'll put it down in a corner try not to touch any of the bag and then I'll pull it off and I'll wipe the uh, roller thing off and then I'll take this, and I'll dump all that polyurethane. Of course, I missed the can. You can't be super clean on nothing, Randall. Jesus, why can't you just keep it clean, man? That's the whole point. And I'll put that in there, and you get all the air out of it, make it a flat bag like that. And this stuff will stay for like two, three days with the polyurethane. With the actual oil-based paint, It'll stay for a week in that bag, and the brush won't get hard, the roller won't get hard, and you don't have to worry about sitting there messing with any mineral spirits or anything. I just got my roll of paper towels. Each time I change, I'll sit there and I'll wipe out. In this case, I was wiping out all the polyurethane, and uh, then when I'm done with the black paint, I'll wipe that all out the best I can with the paper towels to make sure it's all clean. 
Now you see here, there's my black paint. Now this is the third coat of black paint, so therefore it's already been painted on the sides and the bottom. And there's the bag. That was actually two days ago that I put that stuff in there. And it is still soft. See, I can brush that just fine. I don't have to reload my paintbrush. I don't have to reload my roller. Just have to find your hole and stick your roller handle in it. That's why I use on oil-based projects, I use the little four inch hand roller. That way I can take the roller off and put it off in that Ziploc bag. The big ones won't fit in the Ziploc bag like that, quite right. So I don't really use them for oil-based. Now the actual latex paint, I don't really worry so much about it. I still use the actual Ziploc bag for the uh, paint brushes and stuff because I don't like my metal on the paint rushes get rusty but as for the rollers and stuff I've tried and if you can't get it to seal up you're not gonna be able to get that roller done you know and there you see I did all my painting around the outside did my last coat now I'm just putting it up for the next time I use it now actually I ended up throwing them away after this because I didn't use it again for like two weeks. Now the Ziploc bag keeps it nice and soft and fresh and wet, but after a while it does harden up to where you can't use the brush anymore. You might as well just throw it away after you know you're done. Uh, and you already got it in the Ziploc bag, you just throw the Ziploc bag in. Now the black paint, it was it's kind of a pain in the butt to wipe out your paint tray with that but you know it's a lot easier than sitting there messing with the mineral spirits and trying to get it all clean and everything now you just get it wiped out the best you can and over time you get a solid paint tray it's all like multicolors, kind of like tie-dyed and stuff so it turns out pretty good now you see there this is two days later i pulled out my polyurethane brush and the roller is already loaded as you can tell, I was really proud. My mom taught me this. I I was always cleaning out all my brushes and my painting utensils. And my mom's like, showed me one time what she does. She just sticks the paintbrush and all that in a damn bag. And I'm like, what? And you ain't even gotta worry about cleaning it or nothing? That's crazy. Now this is after I pull it up. Now this is the big secret. This is what makes it the big finale. I've got these LED lights. It's only like $10 off of uh, Amazon. I'll have links for some of this stuff down in the description, of course. But these things are pretty cool. They have a remote. Now, it is one of them RF remotes, which means you got to point it at the little thing that comes off the lights. And it has to see the remote to be able to change the colors and stuff. But as you see there, they pop on. They go on all different colors. It's really pretty that way. And this is what it looks like after it's all done.